Video number two, electrical installation. This video is designed to assist with the electrical installation of the EVO series electric diaphragm pump by Aero. This is the second video in a sequence of four videos. To be sure that the EVO series electric diaphragm pump is installed correctly and safely, all videos should be carefully watched in order before beginning installation of the pump. Note, all wiring must comply with all local and or national electrical codes. All electrical wiring must be installed by a qualified electrician in compliance with all national, state, and local codes and regulations. To reduce the risk of electrical shock or other serious injury during installation and operation. Some local electrical codes may require the installation of rigid conduit. Aero is not responsible for accidents resulting from improper installation of components or hardware. Do not attempt any service without disconnecting all electrical supply source. This video is designed to assist with the wiring of the ordinary motor for the EVO series electric diaphragm pump only. For information on wiring hazardous duty motors, contact your local electrician, Aero representative, and reference your operations manuals and technical data sheet. Installation of electronic interface components for hazardous duty applications. Pumps that will operate in environments defined as hazardous locations must only be installed, connected, and set up by qualified personnel with knowledge and understanding of protection classes, regulations and provisions for apparatus in hazardous areas for the region where the pump will operate. Such regulations and provisions, along with the definition of what constitutes hazardous areas, vary by location. If you have questions, please contact Aero Tech Support at arotechsupport at irco.com or 800-495-0276. To prepare the motor junction box, remove the junction box cover and four screws. Remove two of the three threaded junction box plugs, one of the two lower M25 plugs, and the upper M16 plug. Be sure to install certified cable glands for wires. Remove the three shorting tabs. Note that the motor ships with shorting tabs set to no configuration. When working with greater than 400 volts, install shorting tabs in the Y configuration. Next, you'll connect PTO or PTC thermal sensors to screw terminals. Polarity does not matter. Connect the three motor phase wires and the ground wire. 
the shield from the motor power cable must be connected to chassis ground at both ends for EMC compliance. One end connected to the metal motor housing and one end connected to the VFD metal chassis. Next, we're going to attach the encoder cable connector. Next, you want to install the junction box cover using the four screws. To prepare the VFD, remove the VFD cover. The VFD is shipped with four holes in the bottom of the enclosure for cable glands to be installed. Note that cable glands are not supplied. There are two additional spots where holes can be cut to add additional cable glands if needed. IR recommends using a metal cutting hole saw that is 1 and 1 8 diameter, 28.4 millimeters, to cut the holes in the aluminum enclosure. Notice we will need to cut a hole for our encoder cable. You will install separate cable glands for your incoming mains power, outgoing motor phase wiring, and your motor encoder cable at a minimum. We'll begin with the mains power. Wire based on the instructions in your operator's manual. After wiring mains power to the mains disconnect switch, you will want to tug on all three of your wires entering the mains disconnect switch to make sure they are properly secured. Now we will install the encoder cable going through the bottom of the drive. Be sure to properly install your cable gland. Be sure to leave enough wire so that you can properly wire your encoder cable to the drive. From your bag that came with the VFD, you'll take the motor power connector and install as shown. Be sure to follow proper wiring instructions in your operator's manual. You will feed your motor power cable up through the bottom of the VFD and wire it to your motor power connector. You can bring all the wires for the three leak detectors the e-stop and the PTO sensors into a junction box located at the pump. Then exit the junction box with one multi-conductor cable back to the VFD through one cable gland. This is how the three leak detectors, PTO thermal sensors, and e-stop were wired as shown in this video. Any unused open cable gland holes should be plugged. Now you'll take the wires from your motor thermal sensor, PTO, your three leak detection sensors, and the e-stop switch. Feed through the bottom of your VFD and wire according to your operator's manual. Be sure to securely fasten with your cable glands. Remove local control panel or LCP as shown. If you are installing an emergency stop, you'll want to remove the jumper. If you're not installing an emergency stop, leave the jumper in place. To connect the emergency stop, connect one wire from the switch to terminal 12 of the drive and the other wire from the switch to terminal 37 in your VFD. To connect leak detect number 1, connect the signal output wire to terminal 18.
to connect leak detect number 2, connect the signal output wire to terminal 19. To connect leak detect number 3, connect the signal output wire to terminal 32. Connect the plus 24 VDC wires from all three leak detectors to VFD terminal 12 or 13. Connect all three ground wires from the leak detectors to VFD terminal 20. Now we'll wire our thermal sensors. Take one wire from the PTO sensors to VFD terminal number 20 and the other wire from the PTO sensor to terminal 33 of the VFD. Now we will wire our encoder cable to our MCB102 encoder input card. You will take the wire labeled plus and connect it to terminal number 3 on your encoder card. Move to your wire labeled minus and connect it to terminal 4. Connect the wire labeled A to terminal 5. Connect the wire labeled A, not to terminal 6. Connect the wire labeled B to terminal 7. Connect the wire labeled B, not to terminal 8. Connect the wire labeled C to terminal 9. Connect the wire labeled C, not to terminal 10. Connect the green wire with the ground symbol or cable shield to chassis ground. Finally, install your local control panel and attach your cover. Thank you for watching video 2, EVO Series Electric Diaphragm Pump, Electrical Installation Video. Continue watching this series to receive professional instructions of how to properly set up the EVO Series Pump. If you have questions, please contact Aero Tech Support at arotechsupport at irco.com or 800-495-0276.